welcome to New Earth Lifestyles. I am Janie King, hostess of the show. Today is February 26, 2015, and this is a call-in show today in downtown Manchester, New Hampshire, manchesterpublictv.org. So thank you for joining me today. I will be talking today about a few uh, different subjects First and foremost, I went to a workshop last night on spoon bending, and I never really understood what spoon bending was about. And so I'm going to share my experiences today with you on my experiences that I had last night with spoon bending and uh, the power that that has, the, the um, implications toward healing and health, because the reason you do bend spoons is to give you a physical, um, a physical, thing showing you the power of your mind and the power of your heart so I'll be showing you that today on the show and I also will be touching back again on Bruce Lipton's work which is called the biology of belief which I touched on a couple weeks ago I can't get enough of that so I'm going to continually offer that out to you as uh, this is a television show that I have produced that um, I am here to give you new ways of looking at life, new ways of looking at how you can live your life more happily, happily and more genuinely. And we all, he, we all are here, I believe, to, um, to be happy, to enjoy life, and to live life to its fullest. And if, if we're not able to do that because of whatever reason, whether it's physical illness or emotional problems or relationship issues or whatever, then... Um, then my show, this show, is here to be of service to you, to help you maybe to pick up some tidbits along the way that can help you in whatever way uh, you might be needing any assistance. And so hopefully today's show you will get a little more um, tidbit and more inf information about the power of your mind and the power of your heart. And as always, I have my beautiful um, bell of mindfulness with me my seven metal singing bowls thought of my buddy coming here to the TV show as a signal when you hear the bell it is a signal to relax to realign and take a deep breath hold it and release out your nose nostril nasal breathing in and nasal breathing out so we're using the respiratory system when we breathe not the um, auditory, or well not the, um, what system is this? This is the system that, the digestive system starts in your mouth. So when you breathe through your nostrils in and breathe through your nostrils out, you are totally using your respiratory system as that is what your nose is made to do, breathe in and breathe out. And your nose actually has a lot of filtering systems in there, filia that collect any debris that might come through the breathing system. So uh, there's a real reason that you breathe in and out your nostrils because it's part of your respiratory system. Hmm. And breathing is fundamental to our health, fundamental to our uh, quality of life. And we do it automatically, subconsciously. Yet, if we were to focus on it consciously, as when the ringing, when the bell of mindfulness plays or sings the bell of mindfulness, Paying attention to our breath and to our breathing can bring a whole new dynamic uh, into our body through the oxygen that we breathe in, through the intention process. Intention is intending what we want, and then there's also attention, which is um, first and foremost what's going on in your life moment to moment, wherever your attention is, attention is where you are focused. And so bringing your mind, your thought process here, right now, into this moment, into your body, into your respiratory system, and into your eyes as you're viewing this program, bringing yourself current, right here, right now, throughout the next hour, can really help change your life for the better by paying attention, paying attention to what what I'm going to be explaining to you today about spoon bending 
and I just downloaded the book that um, the teacher of spoon bending uh, emailed to me after taking his class last night, and his name is Gene Ang, A-N-G, G-E-N-E, Ang, A-N-G, and he is from California, and he was here in New Hampshire last night, and uh, he's in the New England area for a few days teaching spoon bending. Now, spoon bend, why would you want to bend spoons, actually? So I brought some, some plain spoons here that haven't been bent, and um, so here's a spoon that hasn't been bent, and here is one of the forks that I bent last night. Look at this, bent in half. This is a, a, a this is a, a regular fork that I, I bent, just like this spoon. And um, so you would um, hold it in your hand like so, and and bend it, and bend it. But Right now, I can't bend it, but I'm going to hopefully demonstrate <laughs> at some point that it can be done. Because I did just practice a little bit on one of the spoons. And um, so this is, these spoons actually came from Target. So we could, they're kind of throwaway spoons, even though they're really, to me, they're <laughs> not bad little spoons or forks. forks but uh, anyway, it's going to demonstrate the power of your mind and the power of intention and attention and the power of your energy field, the power of your heart. And so the part of the reason that we bend spoons is to give us a physical proof that what we just intended happened. And it's pretty amazing, pretty ma amazing and a lot of fun. So the name of this program that I went to last night was Quantum Spoon Bending, Quantum Physics, Quantum Spoon Bending, a model for healing and transformation. So this model that I learned, there are, um, I forget how many techniques he showed us, um, one, two, three, four, five, five anyway, because I have five spent spoons and forks. <laughs> and, um, but I think he gave us a few more. And um, so this is a model for healing and transformation. Healing and how, how does spoon bending um, have anything to do with healing or anything to do with transformation? Well, I'll tell you, it was pretty powerful when I bent my first spoon last night because the first, the first process that he gave us, I couldn't bend it, I couldn't budge it. It was just, it was just rigid, just like this. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't bend it. I suppose if you're really strong, you could bend it, but I mean, you really can't bend these spoons. And so the first step is to test your spoon to be sure that, <laughs> that you can't bend it, that it is hard. And um, then um, the next step was one of these techniques that I will show to you or, or explain to you, and you probably, I'm not sure if you can do it at home or not, you probably don't wanna bend your spoons at home, but go out and go uh, pick up some spoons that you could throw away because there's not, <laughs> but you can't really eat with these once you're done with them, uh, bending them, although you can bend them back, but they'll have a little kink in them. And the part of um, the power of spoon bending for me was to really understand and, and uh, embody my intention and my heart space and my thoughts and the healing practices that I've been learning and hopefully uh, teaching some of you some of that as we go along. <clears throat> And so the first process that we would uh, do with spoon bending that we did last night is imagine a beautiful ball of white light above your head, a beautiful ball of white light above your head. And then you would allow that ball of white light to come down your body and out your arm and into your hand and into the spoon, if you're holding a spoon, so into the spoon. and allow that white light to just fill up the spoon and you're allowing the light to um, help the spoon become malleable or soft remembering how it was when it was made when it was made when the spoon was originally made it was soft and so uh, allowing the spoon to fill up with white light and remember who it is and remember that time and just ask it to bend and you'd say bend 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 and then you'd bend it when it's ready and you'd bend it 
when it's ready, but it's not ready yet, <laughs> so it might take some time. So spoon bending, and you kind of got to put some muscle into it like you would a, a can opener. And this program that I went to last night was actually at uh, Susan Morgan's studio or healing space, the Mystic Dream Center in Rollinsford, uh, New Hampshire. And it was a beautiful space and it was a beautiful night. It's right along the river, or along the Salmon River. And so this uh, process was the first process I learned that I wasn't able to bend a spoon with. So it's it's again, oh, there it goes. There it goes. So you wait, and when the spoon actually gets to the point where it's soft and malleable, it will bend. It will bend. So um, that's allowing the intention and the white light to come through you and bend a spoon. Now, um, I don't have a lot of spoons to demonstrate with, so I might want to bend it back, and that might happen in the next process. So there's one sp <laughs> spoon bent. Um, with that process. And um, let's see what other processes. The one that I really liked was called spinning. And spinning is, um, I'm not sure that I can even explain it, but it's about your energy field and, and a, a part of your energy that is spinning the wrong way, perhaps. And so you have to be a little bit aware of energy and energy fields. and. Um, I have explained energy fields on the show before. The chakra system, the seven major chakras, and then we have 21 minor chakras, and then we have, all of our organs have their own energy centers. So they're like vortexes of energy coming in, metabolizing energy into our energy field, into our physical body, energizing us and making us who we are. <clears throat> now, um, if you um, become aware of your energy system, you might just close your eyes and just um, ask for a place in your body that is out of balance. Say, for instance, are you having any um, digestive issues? Um, is there any place, or is there any place in your body that you're feeling out of balance? So you'd close your eyes and you just ask your body, where, where am I out of balance? And you're just trusting that the information that you receive is true and it comes into your awareness, and you want to under, and then you'll ask, well, how is it spinning? So th because the spin has a lot to do with health. The spin of our energy centers, the spin of our whole aura, because our, our heart center has this torus-shaped energy that continually is moving in 360 degrees in um, three dimensions, uh, actually more dimensions, but 360 degrees in this dimension is <laughs> what we're working with right now. And so checking in, with some place in your body that, that may be out of balance. Now, if you had just had lunch or ate something that disagrees with you, you might feel into that and feel how that is spinning. Um, I'm having some problems, some things going on with one of my teeth that broke, so I am going into my fifth uh, energy center right in my throat chakra, which would uh, encompass that area, and I'm checking in with that and seeing how that's spinning. And you're doing this mentally, so this is a mental um, visualization process that you can do on your own. So I'm going to just visualize, just check in with that place in my mouth that, that is, has been um, has been a little bit uh, of a bother to me, and and ask it how it's spinning. And then once I see it in my mind's eye how it's spinning, I'm going to ask it if it can spin the other way, the healthy way, spin in a healthy healthy um, spin. And then I'm going to amplify that spin. And then I gotta look at my notes because I can't remember what we did next. <laughs> and then we wanna speed it up. So speed it up as fast as we can get it going once we get it spinning in the direction we want it to go. It's spinning really fast. It's really spinning fast. Spin, 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 spin. And once we spin, we, we want to release, so I'm releasing, I'm releasing, and then I'm going to take this and I'm going to bend it the other way. So you're setting up your energy, you're setting up your intentions to bend, now I can't bend it, see, I'm, I, I just went through that process, now I, I cannot, oh, I guess I can bend it, it's still with me. So I suppose you could 
bend it back. But once you lose the energy, you, it won't budge. It's, it's just sort of there. So there's another process. This was so much fun to really connect in with the unseen world, the unseen power of who we are. That is the point of all this, because we don't use it just to bend forks or spoons. We use it in the healing room, or you can use it in your body to then shift the energy in your body in a positive healing way. And but by using um, these physical, um, these physical manifestations, these physical things to really show the power of all this, it does empower me. It does hopefully empower you as well to, um, to realize that we are really powerful beings on a, a level that is not seen, on a level that is on the energy level and a vibrational level, vibratory level that we cannot see, but using spoons to bend, we can then see it. And then we can acknowledge the power that we have, acknowledge that we, we do have the power to do this, to, to change our lives, to heal ourselves. That's the point, to heal me, to heal these places in my body or these relationships. Well, one person was going to use this to um, help her to sell her condo, help you in whatever mundane things are happening in your life that you're worried about. You can use these techniques, these spoon bending techniques, to then uh, apply to your daily life to move the energy in a way that aligns, that lines up with what your heart's longing is and what your desires are. And this is just so powerful, and it's so much fun. So I'm going to do a little gong to the, the joy of changing our perspective on life, changing our perspective to know, to know without a doubt that you have the power to change your life in any way you want. And so I am going to take this new ability that I have and really focus on what I want to have happen in my life and l then let it go. So that so the goal is that the key here is you do you do these processes of bringing the light in or spinning your chakras or maybe some of the others that I'll, I'll mention and you do these processes to um, then take that what you've learned and bring them into the real world and change your life for the better change your life to be happy and healthy. When I was going to, <clears throat> pardon me, Barbara Brennan School of Healing, I graduated from uh, that four-year program in 2000. And <clears throat> one of the teachers that I had had a, a son that played soccer. And she used to um, <laughs> talk about she'd be on the sidelines, sidelines rooting for her son and rooting for her, her son's team to make a goal. And she was actually, in her mind, able to help to facilitate the the goal, the the kids um, actually sending power to them, sending energy to them, so that they were able to then do this. Now, that would work great in all kinds of sports, wouldn't it? If people really believed in that, and if you use it for the highest good and for the for the um, highest purpose. So she she really didn't want to um, talk about that a whole lot because it's how what you have to also consider the ethical ramifications of doing something like that, don't you? And so doing it for yourself, for your own healing, for your own highest good, is, is fantastic. Why not? Why not look at these techniques as ways to improve your life, ways to improve your health, ways to uh, bring in the relationships that you want in your life, bring in the people that you want to to help you to um, partner with you in whatever way that is, whether it's creating a business, creating um, a family, whatever. So, <clears throat> spoon bending. So let's go to the next one. See what, well, the, uh, the other one that really resonated with me because I am a very heart-centered type of uh, healer and energy practitioner, working with my heart, working with the power of my heart and the power of your heart can bend spoons and can and by bending a spoon it is demonstrating that the power of your heart can change your physiology can change your body can change your life and how do you do this 
with love. Love is, of course, the power of the heart, right? Love is the power of the heart. So what would it be like to just say to a spoon, I love you, I love you, I love you? What would it be like for me to say that to the spoon? I love you, I love you, I love you. But I didn't, I didn't, I didn't test it first. So you need to test it, make sure it's strong. Make sure you can't, I can't bend this with my hand. But now I've told it I love it, so it started to bend. I could feel it starting to bend. I love you, I love you, I love you. Uh, and then it lets go. It lets go. You can feel it kind of go, caves right in for you when you tell it I love you. I love you, I love you. <laughs> Another bent spoon. And this is fun. Fun bending spoons. But what if you were to say that? Well, actually, let's back up. When you do say that, that is the power. That is the power that you have. You have that power. To, to the power that went into bending this spoon, and I can still feel it's kind of warm right here. The power that went into bending this spoon through love, through care, through your heart center, is actually what you're giving and sending to those that you love. That is a power, that is energy. That is amazing when you think about that power and, and that, that love and all the things that you can change in your life if you truly align and truly connect in with um, these processes, with the power of doing these things. So um, I know some people might think that this is kind of off the wall and kind of crazy, but hey, this is New Earth Lifestyles. <laughs> And we do new things here that maybe you've never seen before, and that's the whole point. Because life is, it, life can be whatever you want it to be. Life can be as different or as the same, as normal or as abnormal as you want it to be. As long as you're not harming anyone or harming yourself, um, life can be fun. Life can be a joy. Life can be worth living. Some people don't think life is worth living, but it is worth living. Because there's so many things that we can be doing with ourselves, with our life. And my, my goal here on New Earth Lifestyles is to give you some points of view and some opportunities to look at uh, your life in a way that may be different. And I'm hopefully different every time you come in here. Hopefully the newness of, the, of what I'm having, what I'm here to offer you is, is um, helping you to think about life in a different way. Because... That's how we change. If you want to change, you've got to look at life in a different way. If you're continually going in the same process day to day, thinking the same things, wishing things were different, they're not going to be different. Why? Because you're in the same rut, thinking the same things, doing the same processes. And that's part of why the, I, I thought I'd show you the spoon bending because it gets you out of that box. It gets you out of the same thing every day, day after day after day. And it was Einstein that told us one of his um, quotes that people uh, in uh, all over the place are quoting these days is, you cannot expect change by doing the same thing every day. You've got to change what you're doing. You've got to change something in order to achieve change. That makes so much sense to me. In fact, that, that was more of a paraphrase of his quote. That wasn't really his quote. But um, how can we expect something to be different if we're not doing something different, if we're not thinking something different, if we're not applying ourselves in a different way. There you go. little mindfulness bell to that. So I would be curious, and I'm going to invite you to think about your life in a different way right in this moment. What is there in your life that you would like to change? One thing, it could be a small thing. Uh, in fact, it's better to start with a small thing than a, than a large thing. What is one thing that you would like to change? It might be something like the color of your hair. It might be something about, um, I don't know, what would you like to change? Your health? Something about your health? Something about, um, I know I've been uh, putting a lot, of, a lot of weight on, so I'm going to think about changing my body to a smaller body to lose to letting some of these pounds drift off of me and so there's something to think about isn't there and to do that now that i have these these new 
spoon bending processes, or um, Gene calls them, um, doc, he's a doc, PhD actually, Gene Ang, Ong, A-N-G, Gene Ong, um, calls them a model for healing and transformation because when you apply these, these two little things that I showed you just now to your body, to your life, and you do it sincerely, life can improve. Life can change in the direction that you want it to go. As long as you're using these tools for the highest and best interest, for the, for the interest of source energy, of creativity, of creator, of God, you could say. As long as you're using these uh, tools for the highest and best interest of not only yourself, but everyone in the universe, everyone in the planet, everyone in the world. And the world is not just the planet. <laughs> the world is the universe and beyond. The world is the universe and beyond. And I thought I would tie this in a little bit with um, what I spoke about a couple weeks ago of um, Dr. Bruce Lipton's work on the biology of belief. Because partly what's happening here with bending spoons is my belief. My belief in the energy process that's happening and my belief in myself and my belief in love because one of those processes was oh, was heart and saying I love you to uh, to the spoon what if you were to say I love you to a part of your body that you don't like say uh, um, I don't know maybe you're, you don't like your digestive system because you have an upset stomach all the time and you have to take Rolaids or Mylanta or something like that what if you were to change your your thought process about not liking some part of your body, say your stomach, and what if you were to tell your stomach, I love you, I love you, I love you, and allow that love to sink into the cells, the cellular level of your stomach. You can try that right now if they have any stomach problems or if you want any help digesting your lunch or anything like that. That comment, those, the phrase, I love you, is so powerful uh, that I just, demonst just demonstrated with the bending of the spoons. It is so powerful because the energy of that intention uh, that you're then sending to your stomach where you're putting your attention is healing, is transformational, is changing the cellular molecular structure of your stomach in the way that you desire it, in the way that love, the highest power in the world, love is coming in and helping your digestive system to come back into balance, to come back into balance. The key here is your attention to your intention, attention to love, but bringing and tending that love to go wherever you want in your body, in this case, your stomach. So when you take in food, if you have antacid problems, um, I know my father had, had to take Prilosec all the time, but, well he did for a while, but then he stopped. But if you begin to love that place in your body that is kicking back up at you and, and rebelling about, against something, if you bring your attention to it and you tell it I love you three times and then you believe it and you know it, I love you, I love you, I love you, And breathe into it. Breathe into it. And breathe into it again. And allow yourself to feel the change. Allow your body to accept this change. I love you, I love you, I love you. And so. Um, I'm going to take this fork that I've kind of started to bend back. Or maybe that's not a good one to take. Let me see. Here's a spoon. So this spoon is... The problem is now I'm pretty energized, <laughs> so everything's bending. So the, everything's bending because I'm, I'm energized. <laughs> Can you do that with your fork? <laughs> because I've been... I'm energizing myself and saying that over and over and over. So now I can just I can just bend spoons and bend forks all day long. <laughs> I'd like to straighten this one out. 
Let me see if I can do that. No, nope, it's going to go only that far <laughs> because that's where it's going. So the power of intention and attention and aligning yourself to your desires, your desire to bend a spoon or your desire to um, change your life or your desire to heal your stomach or your desire to have a relationship, all these things are doable through your thoughts through your attention and through your heart and through your alignment to your energy field. It's all doable. Uh, let, so let's see what else um, Gene has to say in his book, The Spin Technique. I talked about the spin technique, and that was pretty transformative to me to take out into the world and use in other ways. The spin technique, and I, I touched on that earlier about spinning um, the energy in your energy field. I have a little bit of a reservation around doing some of this. So it's a matter of practice and um, does this resonate with you or not? If something um, that I'm saying doesn't quite resonate with you, you might be curious about it and find out, well, why doesn't it resonate and where in my body does it feel uncomfortable? If what I'm saying and what I'm demonstrating does not resonate with you, that's a huge opportunity that you have in this moment to check in with your body with where it doesn't resonate and maybe this is just not for you and that's perfectly fine that is perfectly okay I'm giving you an opportunity to see something different and if it does not resonate with you that's perfectly fine then leave it leave it alone and just um, let it be and I know when I was an accountant back um, a few years ago, <laughs> quite a few years ago, I was pretty close-minded to a lot of things, and especially to this type of thing, to energy, to um, new age stuff, to um, healing, healing the unseen. I was a, an accountant. I have a degree in mathematics, so I was into science. I needed things to be proven physically. Um, and I was drawn to a teacher, an energy healer teacher, Barbara Bennon, who actually was a NASA physicist. She worked for the government for NASA for five years before she uh, went into, um, I think she went into massage, then she went into psycho psychology and psychotherapy. She became a psychotherapist, and then she became a healer because she was starting to see auras and energy around people. But she at first was a scientist, and she wanted to be able to prove things. And that's one thing about uh, spoon bending does that that does for me it kind of resonates with me being uh, on a science-based left brain linear type of person because I can see the results of my mind I can see the results by bending a spoon or bending a fork I can see the results of my intention my heart opening the light coming in whatever the technique is that um, that we're using and so if you're interested in learning more about spoon bending from Jean Ankh ANG. I know he goes to Circles of Wisdom in Andover, Mass. Periodically, he might be there uh, this weekend. I'm not sure because I know he's leaving Sunday, and today he's in Maine. So um, I'm thinking that he's probably at Circles of Wisdom this weekend, which is in Andover, Mass, not very far from here. And Kathy and Bob um, are really good friends of mine that own Circles of Wisdom. So uh, they have a lot of programs down there that are very beneficial. But uh, I didn't know that Gene came from California all the way, uh, and he spends like a week here and um, does uh, different programs for people. So I think we have an incoming call. Oops, which one do I, is this it? Oh, there it is. Hello? Hey. Hey, you're on the air. Is this New World Lifestyle? This certainly is, and who do I have on the phone? <laughs> I'm so excited. I got the show. Woo oh, you got the show. <laughs> you can see yourself on TV. <laughs> so, and, and you, Tell me, what, what is your topic today? I am talking about spoon bending, of all things. Spoon bending. I brought all my bent spoons and forks that I bent last night, and I, I just bent a couple here that I didn't have bent, that I, but I demonstrate. So I'm talking about, um, yes, Quantum Spoon Bending, a model for healing and transformation. And you are Don oh. Drew. This is Don Drew on the oh, line, my cool. good friend. Yes. And where well, are you? I'm, 
I think it's a fascinating subject, and I think that the the people who are watching the show should should be very excited that you've brought this to their attention because it's not on the mainstream, and people um, people can do an awful lot with it. They certainly can. They certainly can, and that's what I'm explaining is how this can uh, relate to your life and to your healing and to your health by taking these. Um, methods of spending a fork or a spoon and, and then using it in your own body or in your own life. And applying it to whatever is stuck or ails you in your in your physical system. Whoa. Yes. That's, that's huge. That's a lot. It is a lot. It is a lot. And um, as I was just saying, um, you know, you may not resonate with this right away, but um, you can take it or leave it. But if you take some time to check in with yourself and wherever you wherever you might be blocked and and so to use this technique, one of these techniques that I just taught um, on your own body, you will see that, that it, it is very powerful. Wow. So do you have any questions or any thoughts? No, I just wanted to, um, I, I am a, an avid, avid listener of your show, and I wanted to know <laughs> what your subject was today and, uh -huh. and uh, you know, what, um, what your process was for, for the people that were listening. Wow. Okay. okay yeah. Um, well, I'll let you go, and and um, I wish you a wonderful show, and I and I hope that the people that are that are watching the show are um, are are getting half as much out of it as as you're teaching. Well, thank you very much, Don. I hope they are too. <laughs> Thanks for calling. Right. Have a have a great show. Thank you. Be well. Bye. Bye. My good friend Don Drew, our partners in crime. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, spoon bending, fork bending. This is a fork, but um, I'm kind of already ramped up. My energy's ramped up, so I'm I'm just bending away. It, it's just amazing. Once you get into this energy of of spoon bending and and fork bending, you can just um, keep on going. So what the process that I was using early was telling your fork or spoon that you love it. I love you, I love you, I love you. So from the heart. And then you can just, just bend it. Just bend it. I would love to bend a tine, but um, the tines are kind of tough. <laughs> I love you, I love you, I love you. Well, so it's not going to bend a tine. I gotta be a little more into it, I guess, for that. But I would like to straighten this fork out. Whoa! Thank you. <laughs> a little kink in my fork. Wow! Thank you very much for that. Ooh, we can feel that it's so warm, so very warm. Now I can't. Now I can't see. It's very fascinating. It's very fascinating. So thanks for that call, Don. Don. Don Drew. Uh, getting me excited about. Um, because, you know, you look at that, I, sometimes I look at it, I, I can't even believe I did it. It's amazing <laughs> that I could bend a fork. I mean, take your fork out and see if you can bend it. And you have to, you know, have that intention going into the fork in order for it to bend, because I can't, I can't do it right now. Oh, there it goes again. All right. See, the energy kind of keeps flowing through. Whew. <laughs> my crooked forks and spoons and the implications of this as I said for healing are amazing and uh, on the biology on the cellular level on like if you think about the cellular level of this and and how how are we doing this how does this happen it's quantum physics it's quantum what does that mean quantum entanglement I'm not really not I'm not totally up on quantum physics other than the fact that it's working with waves not cells, not atoms. It's deeper. It's working with energy, which is unseen, which you can't see. I mean, I mean right around us now, there's probably who knows how many energy waves of uh, cell phone waves going through wherever you are right now that you can't see. That is energy. That is energy. And so we really can't see that, and it's, it's not palpable. But... Um, um, it's real. It's real. How is it you can talk on a cell phone? How is it that you can do anything? I remember when 
a long time ago. Remember the Jetsons were a cartoon show that were on television when I was, um, I don't know how old, old I was at that time, but they had all these amazing contraptions that now are what we have, well, like cell phones and um, and uh, our things that happen in our cars now, um, all the computer programming things that the car can do on its own. And I think in, in England, they're talking about these driverless cars that they're just going to be programmed to drive somewhere. And it's crazy, but here it is. We're here. It's, it's, this is the 21st century, 2000 and, 2000 and um, where are we, 15? <laughs> 2015, I don't, people are saying 2015. I, I, for some reason, I like saying 2015. It's a, just my own little quirk. And so on the cellular level, the cellular biology, biology of belief with Bruce Lipton, um, he's talking about um, the fact that the skin of the cell or the outer part of the cell, if you think about a cell, think about a ball, if you have a, have a balloon or a ball, and the outer part of the ball is like the outer shell of a, of a cell. And the, the, what we've been brought up to believe is that the, the genes, the genetic code, the DNA, the strand of DNA inside the cell, every single cell has, a, has its DNA in there, uh, we've been taught to believe that that DNA is what controls our physiology. And um, Mr. Dr. Lipton has proven that the DNA is in our cells only to replicate its, the, the needs of the proteins within the cells. When the proteins need something, the, it, it, it'll go to the DNA where the proteins reside, and it will uh, they replicate through the RNA and then create whatever it needs to keep the cell alive. In fact, he's proven that if you were to take this, the, the, DNA, the DNA actually resides in the cell nucleus. So there's a nucleus in the cell, and then there's a cell around the nucleus. And he has taken the nucleus out of many, many cells, and you would think uh, uh, it, that the cell would then die if, if what keeps it alive is the DNA. But when he takes the DNA out, the cell still survives for three or four months. It, the problem is that it can't continue to survive because nothing is inside the DNA. Nothing, the DNA is gone, and the DNA is what replicates or creates the parts that break down in the cell. The important part of the cell is the skin. That is the receptor. It's receiving information from the, from the environment. And so our environment is what's telling the cells how to behave and how to believe, how to do things. And as we change the environment, which is the, electric magnetic, the electromagnetic field or the energy, as we change that, the cell reacts differently. And that is how we bend spoons because we are changing our, we're changing the environment of the thoughts of the, of the um, energy field of me that is also in this fork the energy field of me that has the intention that is sending love to this fork, asking it to bend, and it bends. Lo and behold, it bends by loving it, by caring about it, by changing my vibration, changing the environment around me. The energetic, electromagnetic energy environment can, can now change something solid, like a spoon or a fork. So... The cell, the individual cell, I was hoping to have a, um, a clip about from, from Dr. Lipton to, for, to show you, but I wasn't able to get that downloaded onto a CD to bring in. So um, that's why I'm trying to explain it this way. If you think about um, 40 trillion cells or I don't know how many trillions of cells that we have, they all have a nucleus and they all have the DNA in the nucleus, but they all are responding to the environment and how he proved this was he he took um the stem cells they were all he, he took uh, one stem cell and he had it um, dividing so they had like fifty uh, thousand stem cells from the same um, original cell and he put a um, certain number in each in three petri dishes three little dishes and he changed the environment in each of those dishes he changed what was um the stimulus for each of those stem cells, even though they were unique, they were um, all of the same from the same place. They were all uh, exactly alike, but he changed the medium through which they were sitting in, and one of them created a muscle cell, one of them created a brain cell, and one of them created a skin cell. They 
but the, so the only thing that changed was the environment, and um, that's so that's a very basic um, explanation of how the environment changes who we are, who we become. But when you when you expand that out, you can see that the environment that we live in is um, um, creating our beliefs. Is how we how we can create our beliefs through our thoughts as we think so we become as we think so we become so question is how are you thinking what are you thinking about what are you thinking right now and and you know what right in this moment is the only moment you have so why not ask that question <clears throat> what are you thinking right now positive negative that's that's stupid that's crazy oh that's amazing oh that's that's interesting you know how, what are you thinking right now and that energy of that thought is going into your body is in your body and is becoming who you are so i'm just curious about that so excuse me i'm going to just have to take a drink of water i'll take another drink of water mm. thank you excuse me for that <clears throat> So I'm I'm sort of giving you permission or, or giving you an opportunity as you watch the show right now to check in with yourself and become curious. Become curious about what you're thinking, what you're believing, and is that serving you? Is that making you happy? Is that keeping you healthy? If it is, that's great. That is so great. And if it isn't, then how would you like to change? The first place to change is your thoughts. What are you thinking? How are you thinking? We have 60 to 80,000 thoughts a day. That's a lot of thinking. And the majority of us think the same thoughts over and over and over and over and over and over and over all day long, too. What if you were to um, create a, a positive, loving mantra or a positive, loving phrase about yourself, about your life, or about something that you um, positive about you. Find something positive that you want to focus on so that as soon as you realize or notice that your mind is wandering back to that old that old tape that you don't want to hear anymore that's going over and over and over in your mind, as soon as you realize that you're thinking that old thought, you immediately trigger yourself to change that thought to that new thought, to that new phrase that is positive for you like, I'm a good person. Simple. I'm a good person. Four words. <laughs> I'm a good person. I am a good person. I am a good person. And that's true. You are a good person. And so that would be the beginning of changing your beliefs, of changing your cellular structure, of changing the environment with which you are subjecting your body to, your cells of your body to. And that it will go a long way to improving the quality of your life. The quality of your life is everything, right? It's your happiness. It's your health. It's your joy. It's how you get, how you get along in the world. So why not try it? Why not just try changing one thought, finding one small phrase that when you, when you, rem when you remember that your mind is playing the old tape that you don't want to hear anymore, You'll trigger that, that one phrase that you've created positive toward yourself, I'm a good person, to repeat it over and over and over and over again. I don't know if you've ever seen these people that when they don't want to listen to you, they go, la, 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 you know, they, they stick their fingers in there, I don't want to hear this, la, 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 la. Well, rather than doing that, la, 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 what if you said, I'm a good person, I'm a good person, I'm a good person, I am a good person, I am a good person, I am happy, I am healthy, I am strong, I am whatever. What if you did that? Every time that old tape that you don't want to hear that keeps you down, that keeps you feeling the way you don't want to feel, that keeps, that monopolizes your thought process, and your thought process is <coughs> where, sorry, where the power is. The thought process is what bends spoons. The thought process is what changes the molecular structure in your body. So I'm going to tell the spoon, I love you, I love you, I love you. And that's how you bend spoons. That's as far as it would go. <laughs> I love you, I love you, I love you. That positive thought can change the body, your body. 
it changed the molecular structure of the spoon just for that instant. It's not able, to, I'm not able, okay, it's still going, it's still going. So see, I get charged up and now I can straighten out a spoon. That is how you change your body, your physiology, and your, and your, everything about you, your thoughts, with positive, 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 love, love, love. You can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. Because <laughs> when I started last night in the spoon bending class that I went to that I'm demonstrating for you today, the first technique didn't work for me, that the, the white light coming through and, and because I was, I was in this space of, this, of, of um, not really believing it, you know, like you probably. Um, this is crazy. How am I going to do this? this in, you know, how am I going to do this? I, bending spoons? I mean, this, this, is a, this is a hard spoon. This is, that one's all malleable now because I've been loving it so much. <laughs> but um, anyway, just think what you can do for yourself with this technique. It's just amazing. It is amazing. It's beautiful. It is what life really truly is. We have the power to change our lives simply by changing our thoughts toward ourself, our thoughts toward ourself. Because once you change yourself, your vibration of who you are ripples out into the world like a pebble in a pond and touches everybody. It touches everything, the whole universe. It continually ripples out forever. And rather than rippling out this craggy whatever's going on with you, wouldn't it be lovely to ripple out this love, this flow of everything's great, of life is good? Because the people that you're not wanting to be with and not wanting to be around or that are breaking the laws or that are doing harm, what you consider harm to the world, to the, uh, to the planet, that ripple is going to touch them. And the more people that we get doing this that are rippling love out into the world, that love is going to continually amplify so that those people that are, that are in that hate place or that fear place that it makes them act in that way will, will then um, eventually they'll shift. Their energy will shift because all that is here is love and it will shift the world. You will be amazed. So I hope you can try this at home, and I hope you can um, start uh, thinking about yourself in a much more loving, caring way because that can bend spoons, and that, that can bend spoons. That can also change the molecular structure in your cells, in your body. Wherever there may be discomfort in your body, that can change it. It can change it for the better, for the better. If you're using high vibration thoughts like love, and care and um, appreciation and gratitude and harmony and balance, you know, all those things, joy, happiness, that those vibrations are high as opposed to frustration, anger, hate, um, um, what else, jealousy. Those, those vibrations are low and they keep you down. We want to be happy. We want to be up. And it is possible. It's very possible um, through your positive thoughts and your positive loving care. So spoon bending. I bent the spoon quite a few times. Let me try a different spoon. This one's got a kind of an L to it. Okay, this one is not going to bend. So. I'm going to, again, send my love to it. I'm going to tell it, I love you, I love you, I love you. It likes that. I guess that's as far as it's going to go. That's as far as it's going to go. Oh, I'm straightening out my spoons. I can rebend them. <laughs> the power of love, the power of care. Um, the power of light, the power of intention, the power of thoughts, our thoughts. Our thoughts can do this. This is my thought doing this. The power, the thought has a vibration, goes into the, te into the, into the uh, fabric, into the molecular structure of the spoon and bends it. Here we go, we can bend it back because I'm, I'm kind of geared up. I'm fired up for this <laughs> all day, so I'm bending spoons right and left. 
I would like to straighten out this fork. Let me see. Look at that. I am so fired up. <laughs> I can straighten them all out and bend them all back again. Ouch, that didn't work. This one's not going to bend. But that one did because of the love, because of the vibration, because of the thought process and all that goes into it. So let's stop and breathe. Hmm. I'm so grateful that you're joining me today. Before we get go, uh, to come to the end, we're coming to a conclusion. We're running out of time. I wanted to just uh, check in or, or let you know who's coming up on the show in March. Since this is the last day of February. Woohoo! The last day of February. The, not the last day. That, uh, this is the last day of my show in February, I should say. <laughs> the 26th. It's not the last day. We have two more days of February, but we're at the end. The end of the second month of 2015. And next um, month, in March, I will be hosting Debbie Hoffman Adair. She'll be here on the 12th. And David Young is coming back on the 26th. David Young is the one who plays the two um, flutes at the same time and has amazing music and amazing story about channeling Harrison and channeling John, John Lennon and George Harrison at the same time. So, wow, this is great. They'll be coming back in March. And I'll be bringing to you, in between time next week, my own um, whatever comes up for me next week. I'll be sharing it on the show, just as I shared with you today, the spoon bending that I attended last night and learned how to bend spoons, which is about a model for healing and transformation. It's about taking the technique of spoon bending and using it to heal, using it to help um, change the world into a better place to live. So thank you for joining me. Until next time, remember, your heart knows the way.